Hello, welcome to eco-friendly methods of pest management. I am sure you have understood what is integrated pest management. To sum up briefly, it is the study on the insect population dynamics. By studying that, we have to understand all the suitable techniques and methods which are compatible to each other. By doing this, our ultimate aim is to maintain the insect population at levels below causing economic damage. This is more important. So, that is the meaning of integrated pest management. You know, in brief, we can say the integrated pest management includes many technologies and methods which are the components of IPM. So, this is where uh, we have to study further. I will be discussing henceforth the various uh, components of uh, pest management. First and the foremost is legal methods or which are also referred as legislative measures. If you trace the history of uh, the legal methods, the first act in the country was passed in 1906 under the Sea Customs uh, Act of 1878 to stop the entry of Mexican cotton boll weevil, which is an important pest in USA. Then we see the second uh, act of Cotton Pest Act of 1911, particularly in Madras state, the cotton uh, stocks has to be removed by 1st of August, mainly to eliminate the incidence of pink bollworm because the carryover of the larvae used to be there in the cotton stocks. Then came during uh, the British uh, regime, the first act was passed namely the Destructive Insects and Pests Act of 1914, which includes Plant Quarantine Act also. This prevents the movement of uh, the plant products or the plant byproducts containing the insects from one foreign country to another foreign country, from one state to another state and also from one territory to another territory. So, this is one of the major act which was passed. Then Government of India during 1968 passed an important act called as Insecticide Act of 1968, which mainly regulates the import, the manufacture, sales, transport, distribution and use of insecticides. This was enforced from 1st April 1971. Later on, many amendments were made to this particular act of insecticide act of 1968. Later on, in between this, there was one more act, the Prevention of Food Adulteration Act of 1954, which also includes the information on pesticide residues and uh, the tolerance limits for various food commodities. Then moving on to the most important methodology that is the cultural practices or the agronomic practices. These are the practices which are mainly followed by the farmers for improving the crop productivity. They are simply the alterations or changes in the cultivation practices which have an impact on the insect population. Some of the cultural practices to list down, I have a series here. We will uh, go one by one, try to understand how exactly they influence the population. Host habitat management, host in the sense it is the crop, a particular crop of the location. So, here the manipulation of uh, the crop production and management tactics are included. Say to quote some of the examples, the planting time or the sowing time. You know, in some insects have high incidence in the early stage of the crop, some insects have high incidence in the late stage of the crop. Time of sowing or sowing time, particularly in case of sorghum, shoot fly is one of the economically important insect in uh, during cubby areas in dry land situations. It causes uh, economic damage in the form of dead art, the whole plant will be killed. A simple early sowing that is up to the end of June, you find a very negligible incidence or low incidence of the shoot fly. Whereas normally we see the normal sowing in between July 1st to July 15th, that is the first fortnight 
of July, we record a medium incidence of around 10 to 20 percent dead heart incidence. If it is delayed, that is after July, we find the same insect causing maximum damage more than 30 percent incidence. Then we will move on to other aspects like high seed rate. You know some crops like sorghum, maize, we know normally we get around 15 to 20 percent incidence. For example, the one that I quoted sorghum should fly, we get around 10 to 15 percent incidence. Mere increasing the seed rate, say in crops which are uh, where the seed is not the uh, costly affair, by increasing 10 to 15 percent we can uh, maintain the same yield level. The uh, plant population will compensate for the yield losses due to the dead heart in case of sorghum. And some of the other things like crop spacing or plant spacing or crop location, crop rotation or disrupting the crop and insect synchronomy, they all divert or they all concern to disrupting the continuity of the food sources. To understand each one, you know crop spacing. Planting of uh, the crop, host crop at higher uh, intervals or at uh, lower spaces mainly affects the relative growth of the plant, thereby the environment of the crop canopy is affected which has a major influence on the insect population. To quote an example, you know aphids were found to be less whenever the planting is done, I mean less than the space of 0.8 meters. Similarly, the flower thrips and the pod borer in case of cowpea, the increased spacing of 1 to 1.5 percent reduces the incidence. I mean one thing is very clear, it is not a thumb rule that always reduced planting increases the incidence or increased population reduces the population. It varies from species to species. Then crop location, another important eco-friendly method in which if the crop is sown near the unmanaged habitats, lot of population migrate from the unmanaged habitats to the main crop, thereby there will be increase in the incidence. The next eco-friendly method or the good old method is crop rotation. Crop rotation not only uh, creates a discontinuity in the life cycle, it also improves the soil structure and fertility. Particularly this technique works most effective when the pest population has got a narrow host range and when the eggs are laid before the new crop is planted and most importantly the feeding stage of the insect is not very mobile. Rotations normally do well for insects like white grubs and for red-headed hairy caterpillar. Normally the crop rotation works better in case of cereals and legumes. For example, a cereal like sorghum, a legume like red gram, none of the insects are common to these crops. Thereby the insect carry over from one crop to another crop does not happen. So that is why automatically the population of the insects get reduced when these crop rotations are taken. Then disrupting crop and insect synchrony. Normally each crop has a critical stage for infestation. That critical stage should coincide with the insect population in the I mean heavy population of the insect. If the heavy population is there we find more economic damage. If there is less population naturally we find low economic damage. So that is why this is most important. Modifying planting dates is one of the classical example which I explained already. Again in sorghum we find the sorghum midge incidence can be reduced drastically if the crop is sown early. Whereas in case of paddy you know transplanted rice crop, the gall midge is one of the important problem. The incidence can be escaped if it is sown early. Then going back to the other methods you know alley cropping. Alley cropping in the sense uh, leaving one row empty that helps particularly in case of paddy to reduce the brown plant hopper population considerably. By leaving one row empty 
it reduces the microclimate to a considerable extent. Particularly the relative humidity is reduced, thereby the BPH population reduces its egg laying, its egg hatching, automatically those two are related to the incidence reduction. We will take other eco-friendly methods in the next class.